So, ladies and gentlemen, a couple things I want to go over with you guys um, in these examples. So, these examples are a little bit different than what we've covered in before. Um, but exact same thing, you guys will see really kind of the difference. You can see there's no radicals here, right? So that's good. We're looking good on rad no radicals. Um, however, we can see that we still have an expression in the denominator. And we still want to figure out what values then are not going to make our denominator equal to 0. So in this example, we're still following the same thing. We're still following restriction number 2. We know we can't have values. So we're just going to set this, again, equal to cannot equal 0. Now the important thing about this, though, Notice this expression. This expression is separated by multiplication. And we know when we have a product equal to 0, we can apply the, does anybody remember? 0 product property. The 0, are you typing that in your notes? That's good. So the 0 product property. Remember the 0 product property says if you're multiplying two of these and, one, and it equals 0, then one of them has to equal 0. So therefore, we're going to set them both equal to 0 to go ahead and solve. So in this case, we have x cannot equal 2, and x cannot equal negative 7. All right, And the reason why this works is if, let's say x was 2, then that would be 0. The rest of the, the denominator is 0. If x is negative 7, that's 0. The rest of the denominator is 0, right? So the function is defined for two values now. Before, it was just one value. Now it's undefined for two values. So what we want to do is still kind of do the same thing. If you guys were going to think about a number line. Now, again, I don't want to get too much into this. These are actually going to be asymptotes. But for right now, you guys just know them as undefined values. OK? So for undefined values on a number line, we're just going to use open circles. OK? Because again, we're just using the number lines. So everything else is good, though, right? Would you guys agree? Everything else is defined except for negative 7 and 2. So we have everything going that way, everything in between there, and everything going that way. So what I'm going to do is just basically write the domain for each little kind of interval. So for the first interval, we have the smallest value is negative infinity to negative 7. Both of those are undefined, though, right? Infinity is always undefined, and negative 7 is undefined. Then we have the center interval. The center interval is just negative 7 to 2. Right? Do you guys agree that's the next kind of interval? And then the last one is from 2 to, how far does it go? Infinity. And then. Since the domain of the function is all of them together, 